Well, it's a pretty gloomy day on the Welsh hillsides. And it's been like this for a little while now. We're lacking a bit of warmth. We want some warmth to get those squash and pumpkins growing and ripening. Uh, well, most other plants need it as well. There's been a lot of reports around the country of tomato blight. I thought I'd have a close look at mine this morning because they're certainly not perfect. I've been getting a reasonable crop off of most of them, but there's some that are looking a bit odd. Let's take a look. So as far as the dwarf cherry tomatoes go, well, they're looking pretty good. There's some more fruit there. We've got quite a lot of this yellow leaf and a bit dying back in the middle. I think that's probably just normal. I don't think it's blight of any description and the fruit seems to be perfectly okay. And same goes for these. Quite a lot of dead and dying foliage. To be honest, these plants are probably coming to the end of their natural life, fruiting prolifically, ready for, well, the end really. But there's a way to go on them yet. And there's certainly an awful lot of fruit. The larger tomatoes, well, it's mixed. So we've got a green one there, in fact, a cluster of green ones. They look okay. I can see down there that we've got a nice red tomato, which is ready for picking. But these leaves are yellowing and dying back. And I think I probably clipped them. And that one, you can see at the base of it, there's a bit of, well, die back on the stem. And there we are, we've got a tomato that's fallen off. And that may well ripen yet, but we'll have to see. I'll set that one down. And these plum tomatoes are looking good. Um, ripening up nicely and there's some large ones in there and we don't seem to have the same damage we've got lots of this purple spotting on the leaves but I have had that before it doesn't come to much these two plants it's a bit of a different story we've got well you can see there's some dye back there which is at the base of a fairly long shoot and it's come from this cluster of tomatoes uh, or flowers dying back. And if you look in here, there are quite a lot of dead parts to the plant. Down here, you can see the tomatoes and well, they're looking pretty good. I think it's time to crop them just in case. And you can see some fairly significant yellowing and dying of leaves at the base there, but again, I think that might be consistent with the age of the plant. This is probably the worst plant. You can see there, we've got absolute decay in the middle of that stem and that particular leaf collection has definitely had it. And in amongst here, we've got some dead and dying flowers. And down at the bottom, we've got the tomatoes. And this one is literally oozing and it's just not good enough to eat and they've all got these holes in them uh, which is a bit unusual but i'm going to take those off because they're just not going to come to anything you can see that one's got some decay on it so there's three tomatoes on this plant all of which are not looking particularly good and really just need to come off this one is probably salvageable um, but it's got some nasty holes in it. Um, so, I don't know, the jury's out. There's certainly some decay on a couple of these uh, and the others not faring quite so bad. So my heart goes out to anyone who's got blight on their tomatoes. It's an awful thing. It can decimate the crop. Um, at the moment, I think I'm probably losing about 20% of my tomatoes to problems. Um, there isn't going to be an enormous crop, but we'll see. Hopefully they'll pull through and we'll get some of these tomatoes on the table or made into pasta sauce. And that tends to be what we do. If they start to look a bit odd and we think we might lose some, get them in the house, process them, 
get them into some food, even if it goes into the freezer. Well, I've been neglecting the shed for some time now. And it's one of those days where I should cut the grass. I should tidy the shed. But to be honest with you, the shed's got a bit of a mess. So I think it's time for me to give it a bit of a clear up. Just the surfaces, see my way clear. Maybe I can get the kettle on then, which would be a good idea. And I've got a few jobs to do around the plot today, but this one's coming first. Well, that's a bit better. This time of year, I start thinking about, well, the weather's gonna start coming in in the not too distant future. I'm hoping for something a little bit brighter for a while, but you never know. And the autumn comes in so quick. And then of course the shed comes into its own, especially on those rainy or snowy days when I wanna come in and just warm up or make a cup of tea before I carry on. So it's always good to have the shed ready for that. There's a bit more tidying up to do and a bit of cleaning, but got the worst of it done. Good times. There's another ulterior motive for having a bit of a tidy up in here today and enabling my coffee making equipment. And today I've got two cups because there's going to be a special guest on the channel. So I'm going to introduce you to a gentleman who doesn't live too far away from my plot. And he's a viewer of the channel and we've been in touch for well, many months now, and he's often said he'd like to come over and have a look at the plot. So today's the day. And I thought, well, while he's over, I'd ask him if I could interview him. Now I'm no interviewer. I'm much more of a get on and do the plot myself sort of guy. But I think it's very interesting to speak to other plot holders, especially those that have a plot in a similar area to mine and just see whether the challenges he has are the same as mine or different. The other thing is, he's just decided to give up a fantastic looking plot to take on a completely overgrown one ready for renovating and bringing back to the standard that he's used to gardening with. And he's doing that because he wants more space. So it'll be interesting to hear how that's going and what his plans are. So later on today, we'll speak to him. And I'll introduce you. It's time to get rid of that basil out of the polytunnel that I've been promising to move. And you'd be forgiven to think that you're watching a replay because I'm gonna change another one of these broccoli. I've put this eggshell down because I felt like they were getting mauled all too frequently. So that seems to have stemmed the war against the slugs. And this one on the end was just looking a little bit forlorn. So I'm gonna put in another one. Maybe just pop that one next to it and see how it fares, just as a backup. It does have a shoot on it, but hopefully we'll have stronger plants. And the other side of the plot didn't seem to be affected by slugs, but let me show you what happened last night.
So these purple sprouting broccoli were in a bit earlier and were doing just fine. And then last night, this happened. Absolutely stripped. Unbelievable. And I can't see what's done it. I suspect slugs, but I can't be absolutely sure. It's certainly eaten right down to the stems of those really very healthy plants. And this one, not a problem, although there's a bit of munching going on underneath there. And I can't see any caterpillars. And I do suspect slugs. This one, got a little bit of damage, but I've put down some eggshell now on these because oh, they're just gonna strip them otherwise. And there's lots of people saying they're using various things to protect their plants, including wool pellets, which I think is a great idea. I have to keep my eye out for those. But in the meantime, I think what I'm gonna do is just put an extra plant in either side of these canes just so I've got belts and braces because I'm not sure that they're going to come back. They're certainly going to be hugely impacted. I couldn't get my usual powdered garden lime. I did get some of these granulated ones, so I'm going to put that in and around. It doesn't hurt to have a fair bit of it around, given the club root that I experience. So let's get him in. And we'll see if we can protect him. I'll probably get some more eggshell over and put it round them. It's strange because they seem to be working their way down. So I guess these will be the next if there's going to be any more damage. Uh, hopefully we'll have stemmed the flow once we get some eggshell in. Right, let's get this one in. These granules, I don't know, they don't seem to coat the hole that you're planting into. So they're not quite as good from my point of view, but it's all I could get. So it's gonna have to do. Right, that's in, fingers crossed. Well, it's time to get these Lata tomatoes out and they have been absolutely Amazing. So I'm just going to get rid of the plant. There's a few tomatoes left, which I'm going to pull and just allow to ripen in the polytunnel. But I'm just going to make space because it's time when all that trays and stuff that I've been tidying up will need to come into the polytunnel. And I've got my eye set on this area over here for collecting it all together. So I'm going to take the plants out that are looking the worst for wear. This one's actually got quite a few tomatoes still on it. This one, just one. Maybe I'll hang in and just remove this one for now, but I'm certainly working my way towards that. And I'll be able to pop my trays into this edge and then expand as I need to. Well, I've been anxious to get these trays in and not out in the bad weather because these are by far and away my most precious growing trays from container wise and they have been hard to get during the course of the season but they're so rigid so strong and absolutely fantastic for deep root growth and of course the cradle type with the foldable cells in which I've had for a very long time. They are also very good. So we'll just start putting those in there. And well, the polytunnel's not winding down. There's a long time to go, but it's certainly getting to that point where I start thinking about the winter months. I know it's depressing, but actually I do like autumn. So it's nothing better than pottering around the garden in those crisp, sunny autumn mornings. And we're, well, August now, and really, it's only September, and we'll be there. Well, I'm sat here today with Danny, who is a fellow allotment owner, or you, at least you use your allotment, <laughs> and yeah. um, you live fairly close to me, 
uh, a few miles. Whereabouts are you uh, from? I live in Cumbrand, which is just about 40 minutes drive away. So okay. similar sort of climate, I think. Yep. And as far as your plot goes, how have you found this season? Have you found um, it to be a successful one? No. Why not? What's gone wrong? It has and it hasn't. Like, what a crazy year this has been for weather, though, isn't it? It's like, it's, it's just you couldn't write this. Like, I, we went from cold to then frost and then the heat and then the dry spell. So it is definitely tested us as gardeners, I think. Yeah, and um, what about diseases? Because you probably have seen on my channel that we've got a fair amount of challenges with white rot and club root. What, what yeah. sort of things on your plot um, do you suffer from? Yeah, I've started the same with the white rot. So, I'm, But obviously, as you know, I move in plots. So I hope I'm not going to take that trouble with me. But we just tend to have more... Um, there's a lot of blight in the area. I'm touch wood. I've not had it yet, so... I'm very conscious of that's gonna could happen in my area. So, yeah, but it's mostly slugs, really. The, the slugs are just yeah. And you said that your your plot's fairly damp. Yeah, we've got like a natural stream that runs underneath the plot, so um, it keeps the soil quite moist. So that's I think that's just the breeding ground for the slugs. So you have constantly battle with that. But as you know, you just. It's a problem solving every day, isn't it, on a plot? So. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, our plots always have got some challenge or other, and that's yeah. part of the fun of it, I guess. Yeah. So I prepared myself a few questions for Danny, because um, Danny, as you've already established, isn't very far away from me, and the challenges on this plot are very much about the length of the season, because it seems to get cold early in the late autumn, and then it stays cold right the way through to probably February, March, and we can get a frost in this area right the way through until the end of May. So how does that work for you, Dan? Um, last year was pretty much the same. Um, this year, we, we seem to skip the frost. I've I seen everywhere, even here, like um, you were showing frosty mornings. I had none of that. I had no frost at all this year, so my tomatoes were way above everyone else's on all the channels really and is um, that because the area is protected yeah i tend to be in a bit of a dip in the valley so we tend to have our own little microclimate so we're quite lucky really like but then it can go the other way you know it can get really cold there we've had cold really cold winters and then the snow tends to linger a bit longer yeah, yeah. but um no last year and this year last year was hit and miss the frosts that tend to last a bit longer but this year, everything seems to be quick. I've, I've not had any issues with any frost or um, anything being set back, really. Wow, that's, that's really good to hear. Yeah. So, this year, you said that you were going to move plot. So, <laughs> yeah. Danny's got his own Instagram that I'm sure he can tell us what that is in due course. But I've watched his plot, which is looking absolutely fabulous. Oh, thank you. And you get to the point where you think, why on earth would he leave that? But you're going to explain why you yeah. want to leave your amazing plot. I, I've had a lot of comments thinking I was absolutely crazy to do that because I've had the plot three years now and everyone has seen me grow with my plot and progress and get things better and better and upgrade things. And I, I posted saying I finally got to my version of perfection and it's not everyone's, but it was what the idea I had set up three years ago to get to. And <laughs> by a twist of fate, a week later, I was offered a larger plot. Uh, ironically, it was the same plot I was offered when I first came to the allotment. And I said no, because it, it looked huge. Mm. Um, but as you know, you think you've got enough space and you cannot, you always want more. We soon fill it, don't you we? You soon fill it with something. Yeah. And... I went and seen the plot and <clears throat> it's fairly flat. It's missing that underground screen, under, underground stream. Yep. And uh, I just wanted a big compost area to make my own compost. I just, I just want more room. You, you grow as a gardener, don't you? So yes, you do. I started off and I didn't, I didn't know how to grow anything. Mm. And now people come to me now and they ask me advice. So, which is great. Yeah. Yeah. But. Uh, People look at my plot and think it looks perfect. We all know that's not the case. No, no. It's very you know? easy to, to show the good bits of your plot. Yeah. And we've all got those 
areas that we'd rather people don't look at. I certainly have. I've, I've <laughs> seen his. <laughs> yeah, Danny's been walking around today, so he's had a look at my plot, and he's, he says how interesting it is to see it in real life versus yeah. on the camera. So I guess that's the reality. Still very much impressive, though. Oh, well, that's good to hear. Yeah. So you plan to do a polytunnel on your plot, don't you? Yeah, that was what, um, one of the reasons why I reached out to you. Um, your polytunnel is the ideal size that I wanted. Right. And they're daunting things, though, you know, because they are an investment. And yeah. if, you're not in, you know, if you're not serious about the hobby, then they can be a waste of money. And they're a lot, of, you know... There's a lot of effort to put into them when you first have them on there, you know? It's not just putting up a greenhouse. I've got quite a big greenhouse now, but again, with the more space I got, I'll soon fill it, and then yes. I'll, I'll feel the same way I did in three years, I'm sure, about this plot. But and what is it in that polytunnel that you're looking to grow or you really I, want to use the space for? Um, well, the, one of the selling points for me to move plot was I wanted to grow grapes, and when I went and viewed this plot, they actually have like a seven-year-old mature grape vine oh, on the plot. And is exactly where the polytunnel is going to go. So the one part of the polytunnel, I do want to grow some grapes. So I'll be visiting you for bottles of wine before yeah, long. Yeah, you're welcome anytime. So, Very good. Yeah. So I'm pretty fortunate on my plot. Um, because we're up on the side of a mountain, it's not always been a desirable um, plot for people to grow things on so it's basically been a band of very enthusiastic gardeners who work with the difficult seasons and the way that that's transformed into how the plots run is that there aren't a great many rules on this allotment everyone seems to observe each other's needs and we're all pretty sensible but we don't have a committee not really and we don't really have any set rules so what's it like on your allotment by comparison Danny? Yeah so our, our allotment's almost a hundred years old and it's, it was formed a committee was formed then and it's still there now. Um, there are rules and I'm glad they're there to be honest so I, I think the luxury of not having rules can be good and bad can't I you yeah. know because there's no one to keep you in line or other people in line around the plots. Sure. Um, you know they're we have to keep all the gated areas locked at all times. Right. Um, but fairly, fairly, it's not so bad. You know, like weird privilege we've got, like running water for most of the seasons. And that's um, a great asset. We don't have that here, yeah. so we'd really like that. You know, we 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 are waiting for that day the taps are turned on. You know. <laughs> yeah. It is like Christmas Day to us when <laughs> yeah. it turns on. Yeah. But yeah, um, the rural side of it. It's not. It's not some. They're not so much rules. They're more guidelines. Right. You know, like we have. We have to keep them maintained to a, a certain level. Yeah. Um. Because we do have visitors in the area. We know we're we're near we're near the local um, community farm, and a lot of children go there, and then they want to come and visit our, our plots. Which you know that does happen, and we have little shows and barbecues and things. Yeah, lovely. Um. So we want to keep. They want it to be kept quite a to a certain level. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. Yeah. But overall, you know, the committee tend to be, you know, quite supportive, really. Yeah. Um, so there's always someone around, and there is a rule, you know, there needs to be a, a committee member every certain, I think it's like every 20 plots. I mean, oh, our good. plots, I think there's about 100, 180 plots wow, on site. Huge. Yeah, it's huge. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but overall, it's, it's, very good. it's a fun area to very be in. Very good. So with your polytunnel then, are you looking to grow all year round and try and get through the winter with some crops or are you just going to be sort of the main growing season do you think? Um, I'm going to try like no I, I have a, a 10 foot by 6 foot greenhouse and that's kind of used all year round you know like once the tomatoes finish and I take all those out then I use the most of the size for growing my Christmas potatoes then when I bring them out of the frost yeah. so they stay there and I always have to keep you know those watered and I put some fresh greens in and things and spring onions over the winter and stuff but I think the polytunnel has its own little climate so I'm I've never experienced that you know like I've seen you that you shut yours down right? I do really pretty much yes yeah um how have you found that like you know do you is there a reason why you yeah, do that um I I guess because it's so cold here some of the crops that you can successfully work through the winter with um, are a bit challenged in the right. real severe cold weather. 
So I think on balance, um, I choose not to. And then I use that time as a lot of people would see working the ground and trying to yeah. move the plot onwards in other ways. I will try, Yeah. but I'm happy, you know, if it doesn't, if I don't use it, because it's always nice to have a little bit break from something. Because it your is. greenhouse in the summer, it's a full-time job, isn't it? You know, you can, Absolutely. You can spend so much time there. Very it's good. great to have someone who's a plot holder give me an insight as to how they operate their plot. And I guess everybody does something a little bit differently. What I'm really interested to ask Danny is how he balances his work on the plot with the other things that he does, yeah. which are obviously work. And I know that Danny's got some interests that also occupy some of his yeah. time. Um, I think if you have that, the idea of having a plot and you can just visit willy nilly, that's unrealistic. I think you do need to dedicate a certain amount of time to it. And you could, you know, you can spend six weeks continuously coming to your plot and there'll always still be something to do. But I've, I feel like I've balanced it enough. You know, like I work three long shifts a right. week. So I do, and, but then on top of that, I do dedicate two days to my plot. Mm. Um, but I'm, fr but you know what it's like, it's an addiction, isn't it? Yes, you know, it I, is. I wake up and the first thing I think about is, right, I've got to do that, I've got to do that on the plot. And so it's not two days, it no. is every day, you know, and after work you pop in and, you know. It's, and you keep chickens as well. I keep chickens as well. So obviously they, you know, they do need to be tended to. Like my chickens are quite independent, you know, they like, that you can tell that they have better egg production when I've left them on their own for the day. Yep. You know, if I'm working on the plot and I'm near that area, they they don't tend to like that as much. No. But my work size, like, I, it's a miracle. You, it's an absolute miracle how anyone, I take my hat off to anyone who has a plot because the benefits to me outweigh, yep. but it can take over your life, you know, like yep. going on holiday, you know, like, it's not normal that we think, ah, oh, you, you, you spend so much time. Yep. I probably spend, for my two weeks that I go away abroad, I probably spend two weeks. Well, we had a battery outage then, so we're going to carry on this conversation. <laughs> so we were just getting into holidays and how that yeah. impacts. Like, I think when people take over a plot, they don't think about these things. They, you know, they think that they can just disappear for a few weeks and then come back and, and that's not how it works. No. You know, it's, you're very committed to this, you know. Yeah. To me, I always say this allotment is a mar is a marriage. Yeah. You know, and it's you know you need to put a lot of effort in, effort effort into it. Yeah. You know, like I go on holiday and I I've even moved my annual my annual leaves completely not to the summer. Yes. So I don't go on holiday abroad in the summer. I go away every the end of May because I know everything has already been put in that I need to put in. Yep. And then I go away in December. And you got that little spell for things just to get on and grow. I've got that little bit where I can just leave it. And I haven't got things in the greenhouse yet that needs me to water every single day. Yep. You know, I, I'm fortunate, like I said, I got water on site, but, you know, I, I problem solve those things. You know, like I've got a solar panel that has an automatic timer with a pump, so it does sure. water my, my allotment, yep. um, only the greenhouse. But yeah, you move your, I moved it all around. Like my whole, like I never thought that I would do that. I never no. thought that I would, sacrifice going on holiday in the summer yep. for some tomatoes. Well, it's certainly a conversation that Mrs. K and I have about <laughs> when to go and when not to go. Yeah. Um, but thankfully she's very supportive and she likes the crops. So she's, mm. um, she's happy to sort of strategize with me as to when's best to go. Yeah. And like I, a little trips away, I, I stick yeah. to three days. Yeah. Because I know after the three day mark, things start, you know, sacrifice. Starts to impact. Yeah. Brilliant. So. Okay, well, hopefully, in, in the not too distant future, I might come to see your plot. Yeah, you're welcome to see I'll, the old and new. The, bring along the channel and show them what it yeah, looks like. Yeah, that'll be good. Yeah, great. Well, thanks very much to Danny. Danny, you've got Instagram and Facebook? I have, yeah. My Instagram is inside number four. Um, so I, it, it's over, I think the name's going to change because it used to be all about my home and cooking and things like that. But it's, you, if you look at it now, there's a lot more greenery going on on the pictures and... Showing more of that so side of it. Inside number four on yeah. Instagram. Inside number zero four. Okay, well, yeah. pop along and have a look at yeah. Danny's 
um, social media because it's very interesting. Yeah, thank you. Okay, well, thanks very much. And uh, we'll look forward to that occasion when I head over to Cumbran and have a look at your Yeah, plot. you're welcome over. Thanks very much, Danny. <laughs> well, it was an absolute pleasure to meet Danny after communicating with him online for such a long time. And it was very interesting to get his view on his plot. And I'll take him up on his offer to go and have a look at his plot and their allotments and I'll take you along with me when I go. So thanks very much Danny and pop over and have a look at his Instagram. It's always very entertaining and great to view. I do hope you enjoyed the video today. If you did, click the subscribe button, click the like button and if you want updates from me each time I upload a video, click the bell and select all. I do hope you have a great day. Diochenbach.